What's up guys, your favorite mystic, Siren Sims, back at it again with an East High Cup video. So sorry. So this is High School Musical, the musical of the series. Brief caveat about how I used to feel about this show. In the beginning, I thought it was going to be bad because you know Disney. After a certain year, things were hit and miss. You know, sometimes they would have good movies. Other than that, all their TV shows are trash. No, no, I'm not lying. I know some people like the animated stuff. I really don't. I feel like the only time you can bet on Disney being good or not is when they do movies sometimes. You know, like Pixar. <laughs> and sometimes regular Disney, but mostly Pixar. So when the show came out, I was just like, oh my god, a high school musical remake? Don't nobody got time for that. Do not nobody got time for this. So I ignored it. But then I decided to watch it just so I could validate how bad it was going to be. And I was wrong. I was wrong. It was like Glee, but Disney. And I know how that sounds. How could Disney Glee be good? You know, the reason why Glee was so good is because it wasn't fully Disney. It was ABC, so that's kind of Disney. But it was more like grown-up Disney. They found a way to make it... You know, for kids to watch while also adding a level of maturity that made it fun and funny. So this became the best new show that came out on Disney for me. And so I watch it every season. How did they end up making me like it? Character development. Like I said, you don't just need to have an action-packed superhero show to have character development. You can have character development in regular drama shows. Yeah. And regular high school romps. It's the reason why, unlike some people, I actually did like this season and never have my ever. Which is weird. Like like the one time I'm positive, I'm 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 in the minority. I'm not gonna say I'm alone. I know other people like this season too. But like most people found more of the issues with this season and what they hope does or does not happen. But for me, like the one time I think something is good, that's when I'm in the minority. Okay, I'll be there. At least with high school musical and musical series, for the most part most people like it so I won't be in the minority there um, let's talk about some of the characters if I can manage to remember any of these niggas names that aren't in my love triangle or my love square so when I say um, that are not in my love triangle or love square what I mean is Nini, Ricky, Gina and EJ um, the, those are the people that I remember the most um, because they're the ones, they're kind of like the main characters with the main storylines. And so I just remember them. But here's the thing about it though. They're not the only characters there that I enjoy. That they, I, I have enjoyed other people. So, anyway, let's just get into this character by character. I'll talk a little bit about how I felt about the last season. The last season was a roller coaster. And I had some things people do not agree with. And let me explain what that starts with. So, in the last season, there was a lot of love triangles going around. Gina had some options, Ricky had some options. Nini had to choose between herself, the school, and Ricky, so that's a love triangle. And EJ had to choose between fighting for Gina or just bowing out gracefully. You know, whatever it is. So, I just wanted to be like, Ooh, okay. I liked the last season and I know a lot of people were like they liked it but they didn't like the end here's why I liked it I liked how everybody ended I liked that Nini and Ricky finally broke up and it's kind of scary because the fact that they broke up kind of feels like they're gonna be endgame and let me explain it it's like they were together this whole time but then they break up and then they both find themselves and then by the end of the show they come back together that's the laziest way to write it, but that's the way it works. I am not a Rini shipper. I, I don't care about Nini and Ricky. Here's why. As much as they have musical chemistry, that's all they have. Okay? And I know for High School Musical, that's enough. But it got old. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. See, look at the teacher's eyes. Who cares? You want to know who has real chemistry? Da, 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 da. Rina! I am Arena supporters, Arena Stan account. However, 
like I said, never have I ever when I spoke about um, the love triangle between Des, Davy, and Ben. I don't mind the EJ Caswell smell the roses walk in the park. And I'm going to call this the smell the roses thing, smell the roses theory. And what that is, is that sometimes in a love triangle, I am okay with the extra partner. And the extra partner being the person who gets in the way of the one true pairing, the person who gets in the way of the end game. Sometimes I am okay with it because... There is enough chemistry for me and it makes enough sense based on the story if you wrote it right that I don't mind the characters growing up with those people so that they can come to the one true pairing as better people. So even though lots of people don't think EJ and Gina are good together which is I still don't understand why they say that like I've, I've seen explanations and I'm just like I, I just look nobody here's my thing nobody's saying they should end up together by the end of the show if they do that would be a little weird but not terrible I'm just saying that if they want to be together right now so that EJ can finally be in a relationship that's not very toxic like his was with Nini and so that Gina can finally know what it's like to like somebody who's not Ricky then let it happen Please let it happen. They're cute together. And I love the little back and forth. I loved how they became better people in season two. And they also became better friends. And they just fell for each other. That was just so cute. Now, did I spend most of season two mad at Ricky for the way he treated Gina? Of course I did. Which is one of the reasons why I wanted her to be with EJ in the first place. I don't like the way Ricky was always disrespecting Gina. I think like she wasn't there for him. Just like totally forgetting about her. So I was just like, you know what, Gina? Instead of sitting there sad, get on this rocket now. Okay? It was just about my thoughts about the couples in general. Then I'll get into what happened in this episode. Um... In the last season, there was a guy named Jack or whatever who apparently the actress Sophia Wiley who plays Gina, she was in a show with him before. I don't remember the name of the show. Like I said, that was probably one of the shows that I wouldn't have watched because I don't trust new Disney stuff like that. But um, a lot of people would fight me and be like, okay, we don't really like EJ and Gina, but we understand what you're saying because Ricky was acting dumb this season so why don't you just enjoy um gina and jack you know that's a way better choice than ej and gina and you can smell the roses with that and i'm like look i'm okay either way because gina's my favorite character in the entire show i want her to get all of them in, okay so she gets to be with ej he runs his way off the car it's not gonna work so they bounce then jack comes back from the airport saying that how he you know Surprise, he's moving to East High. And then while her and Jack are playing around, Ricky realizes Gina was the one. And this is a story that could, that could go off season. She could fight to try and be with EJ right now. It doesn't work out. And then as soon as she thinks she's either going to be alone or try to get with Ricky, here comes Jack. That becomes a very serious thing. And then boof, boof, it explodes in some way. Then she is a Ricky. Look, I am an arena supporter at the end of the day. However, I do like that the writers are giving her a lot of viable options. I know some people think that her and EJ are not viable, but I do. So I like it. Um, Nini, she's okay. She's okay. She's a great singer. She makes some good written songs. So I'm okay with her. She's not in the way of my one true pairing for right now. So I'm definitely not upset seeing her on my screen anymore. Even sometimes she annoys me. But it's fine. Ricky, get it together. Get it together, Richard. Get it together, Dick. Get it together. Lily? Lily, bro? Lily, bra? Okay. That's all I have to say on that stupid ass. Um, Sam is not going to be in this season, so it's fine. Big Red is absent, but we get to see that their love is still shining from Ashland. Our Belle, Belle, the Bell. Um, I love Courtney, but you know, they're still kind of characterizing her as the black best friend character, even when her best friend isn't in a scene with her, which is just really fucking weird. Like, usually nowadays in shows, if they're using a trope or a stereotype, they would at least try to subvert it in different scenes. Like, okay, Courtney is the black best friend archetype when Needy's here, but when Needy's not here, we get a little bit more characterization. And I guess they are trying to give a characterization, but the diva black girl 
who doesn't like the woods is still kind of a trope. But it's fine. I love her. She looks great. And at least she always looks great. And she is the best singer in the show. I don't know if people want to fight me on that. Maybe she just needs like 2% more vocal lessons. But um, have you heard her voice? She has the most powerful voice of this show at the very least. And so you're not going to fight me on that. But hey, at least she's hashtag main character energy. Anyways, let's get to this season. So... The Wildcats, or at least just some of them, which is how it happened to be Carlos, Ashley, Cortland, Ashley, not Ashley, Ashley, Courtney, and EJ are going off to camp, and the rest of the characters will be wholly absent. Halfway, th no, in the beginning of the episode, with how everything started, I was like, I have a feeling Ricky and Needy might just pull up at the camp. And by the end of the episode, Ricky just pulled up at the camp. Like, look. I watch a lot of TV shows, so unfortunately, some things aren't going to shock me. But Ricky coming at the end of the first episode was a little shocking, especially since Gina and EJ are having a moment, and they were kind of like, what could tear us apart? And then Ricky just comes in, in real life and metaphorically, because we as the viewers know that that's probably going to end up being their downfall. Oh, it was dramatic and I loved it. See, I am arena supporter so even though i would love to have ej and gina have a, a good space of maybe even just half a season together before the breakup i am here for them sowing the seeds of, of, of ricky and gina in the middle of a relationship that i don't hate because they are the end game i want okay they are the end game that i want all right so Ashlyn is kind of battling with the fact that this summer camp apparently changes people. And obviously, it definitely, this is the same camp where uh, Needy fell for EJ. So obviously, people come in one way and leave a completely different way, which is not good for the smell the roses. Are they even going to get three days before something happens between Ricky and Gina? Like, oh my god. The, what I do like about these writers is that they they write it like it's not a Disney show and it, it they they throw little surprises in there, you know? It's giving once upon a time. You know, once upon a time is Disney, but it's also not. Um, okay, uh Ricky found out about Lily because obviously she didn't have a good excuse, so he left and went to the camp. So that will be really exciting. I really want to go watch the next episode right now, but you talk about just a little bit more. So the character named Maddox, who's Gadget, who seemed really chummy with EJ, so I thought that was going to be a bit of a conflict. Side note, when EJ and Maddox met up, they were like, Rocket Man, Gadget, EJ being Rocket Man, Maddox being Gadget, and Gina made a comment to Courtney, what language are they speaking? Courtney was like, just roll with it. And I was just like, really? I know it's geeky. Which is weird for EJ because he's a jock, but EJ said himself that he turned from a jock to a jock actor. Why are we... And you are all theater kids. You're all designers and nerds and theater kids and geeks. Like, why are we sitting here pretending that there's a level of geekiness that y'all are not willing to stoop to? Courtney, I'll give her a pass because, you know, you know, sometimes black people just be like, oh, that's that weird geeky white people stuff. But for the most part, it's like, where do y'all get off? Y'all are all theater kids. That's like the heights of nerdy, is it not? Whatever. Um, Carlos and, is away from Seb, so he's feeling away about that. I feel like they're trying to start something between him and Jet, but I'm not sure. But I called it here first in the first episode, okay? I called it here if anything happens. Corbin Blue was the stall. And I'm, every time I see him, I'm just like, you're so attractive, but I miss your hair. If you had kept up with your hair... You would be that heartthrob for years to come. But whatever. He was the guest star, but he wasn't going to stay to direct the Frozen musical. So now EJ has to direct it, which means he's going to be busy, which will give Ricky and Gina more time. I don't know why I sound so excited, because I did want to see them together. But at least in this first episode, we got a few kisses between them. So you know what? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, with the teacher, Miss Jen... Looks like she's having a crisis where she likes somebody, but she's not that compatible with them, which I can relate to. 
but I hope this just kind of means that this is inching towards her and Mr. Benjamin being endgame because I don't mind that. I don't mind her smelling the roses with, with Ricky Bowen's ma father, Ricky Bowen's father, and then ending up with Mr. Benjamin at the end. I was kind of hoping she would have had a tryst with Zack, but he was an asshole, so that tryst is not happening. The, the boy who played Lumiere at North Kill High or whatever, I was kind of hoping that something would have happened between him and Ashlyn before she decided to settle down completely with Big Red. Because here's the thing about certain relationships. They can get old really quick if you don't pause them sometimes and put a little interjection. Give us something to liven up the romance. Just to liven it up a little bit. But this episode was really good. It was just starting things out. You can see there's going to be a whole lot of dynamic shifts and people are moving forward in their character arcs which we love to see. And I'm just here for this new episode, this new season. Ah! Alright, anyways guys, I'm going to watch the next episode right now and then make another voiceover. Anyways, see you in the next episode, Wildcats. Goodbye, Simmons. Soo-soo!